That's the swamp people. <laughs> Come to get us again. I gotta have a deep breath after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we hope you're enjoying the music tonight. Um, we certainly are. It's a, it's a really special night um, to be joined by Kit Downs and Will Sash. And we're playing um, the music of Jimmy Jufri's varied groups of three. I think that was his magic number. He, he always had three people in his band. And he had, um, he had all sorts of different trios. Sometimes he would have um, you know, clarinet and um, bass and piano. Sometimes he'd had clarinet, bass, and guitar. Sometimes he had miscellaneous flutes and drums and bass. And he did some very interesting combinations, all of them um, very kind of introspective and not yelly for being very free music. He was, um, he always made you think rather than made you angry, I think. And um, Kit, this, this album is an interesting one from the perspective of the, um, the, the main album that we're looking at, which is these two that were recorded in 1961, Fusion and Thesis, are particular because of the involvement of a certain composer. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, right. So the sound of the trio with Steve Swallow and Paul Blay, which is the records that you just talked about on ECM, that's a good collection called 61, um, owe a heavy debt to, to the composer of most of the tunes on that record, which is Carla Blay, who's now very famous for having written for all sorts of ensembles and written for a lot for Charlie Hayden and for her own big band and for Steve Swallow's things. Um, but back then, she was just like on the scene, hanging with lots of really cool people, great musician herself, obviously, and writing tunes for people to play. And she'd written for Paul Blaise Trio with Pete LaRocca and Steve Solo again, I think. Um, which is maybe how this came about with Jimmy Jufri, I don't know that. But um, they had a, a trio session which is called Footloose, which played a load of Carla Blay tunes, um, some things called King Corn. And Ictus is on there, and um, uh, some other things I can't remember now. Floater is one of the tunes. Right. It's funny how, uh, well, it's great how, how the, the tune titles range from <laughs> kind of seriousness into kind of kitsch American to fun. And, you know, she has a, a tune called Lawns, you know, yeah. which I, I think is, and then you have, you know. Jesus Maria. Yeah. It's the whole spectrum. The whole spectrum. Do you, when you're kind of, you were, you were telling me something about, you know, the way that she composes voicings and, and that her, you know, her music is up on her website. So you, you had looked at some of it. Do you yeah. see any similarities with other composers or is there anything that you... She inhabits that kind of peculiar, not very well described up to this point role of jazz composer, as well as being a player herself, obviously, but particularly because she was writing whole albums worth of material for other people to play, like this one that we're playing. Um, and that's a very difficult role to inhabit because of how much you put on the page or not. And a lot of the time you're writing for particular improvisers, but in the way she writes, sometimes it's not. It's just a lead sheet kind of thing. And she was into that as well, just having very immediately... I think she was into that. I don't know that. But I, from the way it's presented, it's very immediate and very easy to just get in and make, your, make yourself at home and come up with your own ideas and stuff. But at the same time, then you get things like Jesus Maria and some of the other tunes that we're playing that have very specific piano voicing stuff. A lot about sixths, compound sixths mm -hmm. are everywhere, right, in this uh, music. And uh, and a lot of parallel voicings and things, really piano stuff in right. a way. And they're very specific. So you get some tunes like um, like Ictus, which is like, it's like based around a rhythm changes thing. But then also you get uh, a tune that we're not going to play today, but... Uh, another one that's completely through written, basically. Right. It's like you could, song, yeah, yeah, if you were to score that out, it'd be like 20 pages. You could, you know, bind that up for a proper like classical kind of computer's edition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the way they did it, I think, is probably very shorthand and like a little loop of eight bars, 16 times, or something like that. You know. Yeah, I think the uh, one of the the kind of if if people haven't heard this group's music, um, it's a really interesting bridge between kind of free jazz playing and this kind of, you know, basically if people couldn't categorize uh, something that was, um, that, well, c categorize something that was composed by, like you said, that weird role of what is a jazz composer, because Neil Hefty is as much a jazz composer as Carla Blay, but 
totally different role, you know. Um, this would have been called third stream music, which in a, in a way it is, but it, it really isn't. I mean, it's much more in the jazz vein. And I think what they, what they accomplished and what we're trying to dig into tonight is how to play freely without kind of just screaming over one another. And so if you, if you ever get a chance to put on this album, you, you, you'll hear these compositions by, by Carla Bley that have these kinds of um, almost naive melodies. And then some of them are, are more involved than that. And then this really free improvised texture that is really hard to emulate, but really easy to listen to. Yeah, in a way, she like created the sound of the band without having ever played one note in it. Like the way they play together is so off of the music, but you couldn't write that down. That's what I mean by the enigma of a jazz composer: is you couldn't score that. You couldn't give anyone instructions, other than Steve Swallow, Paul Blay, and Jimmy Jufri to make that kind of noise together. You know? Yeah. Well, let's continue on with. Uh, should we do uh, scooting about? Scootin'. This is a Carla Blay composition scooting about. Um, so, so what we think, what one head, uh, then blowing, and then a little phrase in the middle.
Scooting. Scooting. Should have been trudging. Yeah. Can I put some music? Yeah, play the first key.
Thank you. 